Hi everyone! Welcome again to Online Sunday School. Today's story is entitled Solomon Asks for Wisdom. It's found in 1 Kings 3, 3 to 15. Before we go to the story, here's the memory verse. Proverbs 3, 13 to 14. Blessed is the man who finds wisdom, the man who gains understanding, for she is more profitable than silver and yields better returns than gold. A fairy tale tells of a woodcutter who, as he was chopping trees in the forest one day, met an elf and was given three wishes by the elf. The woodcutter quickly ran home and told his wife about this, and the couple talked excitedly about the things they would wish for. But in all their excitement and greed, they argued and quarreled, and during their argument, they wished troubles on each other, and in the end, they wasted away all three wishes. Imagine being able to wish for anything and getting it. What would we wish for? We wouldn't be as foolish as the woodcutter and his wife who wasted away their three wishes, would we? Well, maybe we would. It's natural for us to be greedy and selfish. Our story today is about a young man who was told by God to ask for anything he wanted. What do you think he asked for? Did he ask for something that pleased God? Let's find out. Many years have passed and King David was getting old. He had many children, but the one whom God had chosen to succeed him as king was Solomon. One day, David called for some of his trusted servants, and he told them how they would anoint Solomon king. So they put Solomon on the king's horse and escorted him to a place called Gihon. There, Zadok the priest anointed him with olive oil and proclaimed him the new king of Israel. Trumpets were blown, and the people shouted, Long live King Solomon! Not long after, King David knew that he was about to die. He called his son Solomon and gave him last instructions. He encouraged Solomon to do what God would command him to do with confidence and determination. If Solomon obeyed God, God would keep his promise that David's children would always be king over Israel. And so David died and was buried in Jerusalem. So now Solomon was the king. He was very young at that time, not more than 20 years old. He had many responsibilities because his kingdom was a large one. Solomon loved the Lord. He knew that when his father obeyed God, everything went well. So he made up his mind that he would obey God too. One day, King Solomon went to Gibeon to offer sacrifices to the Lord. And that night, something happened. The Lord spoke to Solomon in a dream. God said, Ask for anything you want, and I shall give it to you. Wow! The very same God who had performed so many miracles for the Israelites and sent plagues upon their enemies is now promising to give Solomon whatever he wants. Solomon thought quietly and said, O oh Lord, you have shown great and steadfast love to my father because he was faithful, honest, and true to you. You have continued this great kindness to him by allowing his son to sit on the throne. And now, O oh Lord my God, you have made your servant king in place of David my father, although I am but a little child. And your servant is in the midst of your people whom you have chosen, a great people, too many to be counted. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding mind, that I may know right and wrong, and be able to govern your people well. And it pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this. And God said to him, Because you didn't ask for riches, or long life for yourself, or the death of your enemies, but unselfishly ask for wisdom, behold, I now do according to what you have asked. I give you a wise and understanding mind, so that there will be no other king equal to you. Moreover, I will also give you riches and honor, something you chose not to ask for. Solomon was rewarded for seeking what was best for the nation, not things for himself, and God allowed him to enjoy both. Asking God for things that benefit ourselves is natural, but it's not the most rewarding. Let's think about our prayers. Do we mainly ask God for things for ourselves? Or do we pray for others also, their needs, and what will benefit them? God's word also urges us to seek His kingdom and His righteousness first, above our own desires. This means we should pray for things that are according to His will and plan. God then promises that He will take care of all our needs and sometimes, but not always, our wants. We can trust God completely to answer our prayers as He sees best, because He knows everything and He knows us more than we know ourselves. Many people want to have lots of money, but let's look at our memory verse and see what it says about riches. Our memory verse says that wisdom is far more precious than silver or gold, 
It teaches us that wisdom from God is much more valuable than a ton of treasure and all the money in the world. There is no comparison, and the person who is wise is also blessed. In other words, he is happy. You may say, of course I want to be wise, but do you take every opportunity to receive wisdom from God? God gives us wisdom through reading the Bible, listening to the preaching of our pastor, listening to our teacher during Sunday school, listening to Christian radio or TV programs. But it's not enough to just listen, we must obey as well. If we truly want wisdom, we must value it more than other things, just as Solomon did. So when it's time for Sunday school, we must watch and listen to the lesson instead of playing and obey God's word. And God will be pleased with us as he was with Solomon. Dear God, thank you for the story today. Thank you for teaching us to value wisdom more than anything in all the world. You made Solomon very wise. Help us to be wise also and to follow you and love you more than anything else. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you.